I hurt people and, and I've did bad things and, and, and I've did things that I'm ashamed of, you know, to this day. I was a, an addict for two and a half decades and, you know, th there's things that I've done that, that I would never tell anyone. My name is Brian Blevins. Drugs first entered my life when I was, uh, I was probably 14 or 15 years old. Once I got to about my junior and senior year, you know, I was using and uh, going to school that way. You know, I didn't know what I was going to be. I never uh, got out of high school and said I'm going to be a, a fireman or a policeman or, you know, I just never had no... Uh, real ambition and uh, I got into cocaine. Brian growing up, he was a very hyperactive child. He was a good athlete. He was good in school. Fun to be around, always, always uh, cracking jokes. It's just heartbreaking knowing that you think there's something going on with one of your kids. I would call him every morning. to see if he'd answer the phone. And if he didn't, I was out looking for him because there were so many overdoses and I just knew someday it was gonna be him. The police came and got me and I had three grams of crystal meth in my pocket and the SWAT team came and, and all the police come in there and they get me and they reached into my pocket and they pulled out the drugs they had laid the drugs up on the, the back uh, trunk of the squad car and when they handcuffed me and they put my face over the drugs, I ate the drugs I started going into cardiac arrest. They sent an ambulance and I started blacking out and I was in, in uh, the hospital for seven days. The day that I got out, I had some drugs hidden at my house. I went home. And, and used. I could have died and it didn't matter. When I went to court and for uh, this last charge on uh, November 24th, um, they had to do a pre-sentence investigation. It's a report that uh, goes back through all your criminal past and your criminal history. After I got out of high school, which would have been 1995, um, I was arrested for uh, a breaking and entering, um, a burglary. 2001, that's when I got my first felony, um, dealing in cocaine and possession of a Schedule 1, 2, or 3 controlled substance. In 2006, public intoxication. Um, 2010, operating while intoxicated. In 2012, dri driving while suspended. In 2012, uh, possession of methamphetamine, um, neglect of a dependent. Not very proud of that one. How they described, you know, all the stuff they had on me. And, I mean, it's just, it's a lot. Man, I just hurt so many people. It was like everything was about me. My uh, family wasn't going to help. They were done bailing me out. I was facing 18 years in prison, which, you know, at 42 years old, you know, that, that's a long time. The next day, I was so sick from not having my drugs. For uh, nine days, I didn't eat or drink. Um, I was vomiting and, you know, messing myself. I mean, I could barely hold my head up or, or make it to the toilet or splash water on my face. And uh, my dad had someone come they led me down the, the hallway and there was a gentleman um, that was sitting in a room and he looked at me and he said, Brian, he said, if you died right now, he said, where would you go? 
I went in the shower and it was just freezing cold and I put my hands on the wall and that's when I cried out to God and I said, God, I said, if you're real, I need you that I'll go anywhere, I'll say anything and I'll do anything and I'll give you all the praise, honor and glory. Do you feel better? Yeah. You're gonna go home and sleep sleep like a baby. I've never told all that junk. It's always been like. Hey, it's called freedom. That is freedom. That's freedom right it's there. Over. It's over. It's done. Now the next time you tell it, it just gets a lot easier. Does it? Yeah, it does. I don't know if I want to tell it again for a while. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, it's important to share your testimony. Not only for other people, but for you. Right. Because that's healing. Somebody saw something in me to call me and say, hey, would you like to come and work for us? The amazing thing is my boss was a, a policeman for 25 years that had put me in jail probably 10 times. I mean, I've raided Brian's house as a SWAT team commander, and I've ordered guys to tear down his doors and windows and throw flashbangs and blow things up. If there was one person that I would have disliked the most because, you know, he was a cop and I was a criminal is standing in front of me as my boss. We'd be in the truck together and I'd look over and laugh and say, this is a lot different than me chasing you around and tackling and chasing you through cornfields and car chases and all that. You know, from somebody that I could say I used to hate, I love him today. You know, I went from absolutely nothing. I got a job as a barista, and I went to a manager all within a matter of two years. There you go. You need cream sugar? Yeah. I share my story in the coffee shop all the time because, you know, my story is meant to help somebody else. When I tell somebody who I was, you know, and they see who I am, it's hard to believe. So I think God has, like, flipped my script, there's light at the end of my tunnel.